Well, good morning. It's 10 o'clock, and welcome to the Pauline County Board of Commissioners September the 13th work session meeting. At this time, I'll call this meeting to order. And again, thank you all for being here participating. Uh, Brian, who will bring forward the citizens wishing this week on agenda items? Just a heads up, I leave my phone on too often during these. Thanks, sir. And we are uh, honored to have with us this morning Pastor Ron Cooper from the Rock Church. And he's going to bring us our uh, invitation and lead us in the place of the flag stand if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask your blessings upon this work session today that you give give us solutions to our problems, that you give us wisdom to deal with them. Lord, I pray that it's a very productive day. For Lord, we know that today is a day that you have made, and we rejoice and be glad in it, that it's not just a common day, but it's a day that you've made. Lord, we give you thanks for all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cooper, so much for being here. We appreciate it. I'd like to announce that uh, Commissioner Ron Davis is in Blairsville, Georgia this morning uh, getting uh, ACCG leadership uh, training. So um, that's why I'm not here. Under minutes, uh, the August 28th, 2018 work session minutes uh, and the August 28th, 2018 board meeting minutes are available for review. Under positivity time this morning, uh, we have the uh, Commemoration of the just a few days ago, the 17th annual 911 memorial ceremony that took place, or one of the places that it took place uh, was Mount Tabor Park. So that's what we're going to show you this morning. <laughs> ceremony went good this year as it, as it normally does. Uh, it's led by our honor guard for Palm County Fire and Palm County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Lieutenant Gravitt with the Sheriff's Office led the way this year. We've been doing this for approximately 12 years now and we do it every year. Rain or shine we did. Last year we missed last year due to hurricane weather. That was the first year that we've missed in quite some time. We enjoyed the public coming out and supporting us. The firemen and Police officers, the retired shields of New York City, and uh, the airlines had representation with us today, and it was a great event by the, uh, for the community and, and uh, to remember our fallen brothers and sisters and our young men and women that are continuing to fight to keep our country safe and to keep us all free. And uh, we've uh, we've had a blessed morning. Yeah, and we've got uh, Colonel Hutton and a Deputy Strolley here with us. Uh, they're going to talk with us later in closed session. Brian Acker, our Human Resources Director, again to come forward, is going to announce our Pauling County Award from the uh, Health Promotion and Wellbeing Grant from ACCG, the uh, group through the Group Health Benefits Program. Thank you, Brian. Good morning. 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 I won't even pretend to uh, take credit when Chairman Carmichael saw this. Uh, he sent me an email and said, I, I hold you responsible for this. I'm not going to let you do that. Um, I am going to hold responsible. Come, come on up. <laughs> Ashley Hewlett from my office. She's our wellness champion. And also, Kara Palmer helps her manage and coordinate this. 
I can tell you a little bit about what we've done, but we basically have applied for a $6,000 grant with ACCG. We've received it. And bottom line is it lets us do some, some basic health promotion, wellness things. They'll tell you about some of those activities, but again, they deserve the credit. Not me, thank you, but I want to make sure they get the credit and let them tell you a little bit about it. Um, yes, yeah, it's a $6,000 grant. We use it for health and wellness activities for employees. Um, we do wellness, walking challenges, lunch and learns, cooking demos. So um, we're excited to have this again. We appreciate the support, and we really can't wait to see what all we can do this year, even you know, with a little bit more money. So thank you very much. we have none this morning. Bid awards, none this morning. Under reports from committees and departments, we're happy to have an update from Ms. Ann Lippman, the Community Development Director, to give us an update on building permits and business licenses. For having me at the beginning of each month to talk about uh, what's going on in community development specifically building permits and business licenses um, as you can see permits went up in August um, for the year we have had 4,261 permits issued um, the breakdown between single-family detached and non-residential we've had 1,121 single-family detached and attached permits and 127 commercial permits. Um, you'll see the number, the value for the August non-residential non permits is high and that is due to the jail. So that was a 600 mil or $60 million um, value that was permitted um, in Paulding County. Um, and each month I, I want to kind of bring a new twist to what's going on with the permits and last month I had a call from a person interested in locating, um, I believe it was a church in Northeast Paulding County, he wanted to know what the gro growth rate was since 2010. Um, so since I tracked the data and you can sort of project the average household size in Paulding County is 2.99. Um, so if you look at it broken down by post, um, as I always point out that post four seems to win the building permit <laughs> number each year, but if you break that down by the projected growth, um, I verified with Ms. Skipper, um, in 2010 each post roughly had 35,000 people. So if you take the permits and project out that growth based on 2.99 people, you can see that each of the four posts has grown, um, but post one has grown by 11%, post two by 4.3, Post three by 6.73% and post four by 33%. Um, this graph just shows that growth, so I thought that would be a little interesting. And I roughly estimate the population to be about 160,000 people, so um, it'd be interesting to see after 2020 how much that grows even more. Um, as far as business licenses, this is kind of the slower time for the year. They did have 66 new business licenses issued in August, bringing us to a total of 3,000. 95 and the breakdown between home occupations and commercial is 842 commercial locations and 2,253 home occupations. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. If anybody has a special number they'd like me to research for next time, I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Under uh, public participation on agenda items, Ms. Lynn Backlini is going to uh, come forward and talk about new business number two. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I'll be brief. New business item number two, we're entering into an agreement with the City of Dallas and Baldwin County. So back in the end of July, we were informed on the new jail that the tax fees for sewage were going up $500,000 over what was originally budgeted. Chairman Carmichael, I emailed you numerous times about it and never got a response. I find that 
city of Dallas is wagging the dog. Their little tail is making the county jump. They should be held accountable for those horrendous tax uh, tactics. Sewage fees is one thing, but the tap into their sewer for a fee of eight hundred thousand dollars is absolutely horrendous. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to correct that I did respond to the first email, and, and I have that on my computer. <clears throat> Please forward it again because I never received your response. Okay. Under the consent agenda, discuss action on three consent agenda items. Number one is to authorize the chairman to sign a utility easement with Carroll Electric Membership Corporation, EMC, for system upgrades at Mulberry Rock Park adjacent to Mulberry Rock Road. Number two is Pauley County Sheriff's Office request to officially retire K-9 Major from his police K-9 duties and become surplus property of the county. If granted, K-9 Major will live out the rest of his days with his current handler, Lieutenant Billy Hurst. You can, you can come up if you like to. Uh, yeah. We've on the consent agenda items. Um, That's fine. We, don't, we don't require any explanation unless Request. Number three is to authorize the chairman to sign and submit the annual Association of County Commissioners of Georgia ACCG safety discount verification forms. Would any uh, commissioners like to uh, bring any of these three items up to regular session, to regular uh, part of the agenda? I wouldn't mind hearing from Mr. Hyde. Colonel Hunter, to come forward and, yes. and give us the information that you have, it would be greatly appreciated. Where's your hat? <laughs> well, my mama says not to wear me doors, so. She's <laughs> right. <laughs> like keeping the horse out there. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate the opportunity. The uh, K-9 Major, um, he started with us in 2009, September of 2009. So this month will be uh, his ninth year with us. Uh, his breed is a Belgian Malinois. He's ten and a half years old, <coughs> and uh, he was in he was imported from Slovakia. Uh, he's a dual purpose canine, which is uh, drug detection and uh, patrol work. So he's uh, Lieutenant Hurst. He, he was his partner for for nine years, and it's. Uh, it was a tough decision for Lieutenant Hurst. Uh, as you can imagine, um, I've never been a canine handler, but I've had a couple partners that uh, I rode shotgun with, and uh, you know, when, when they departed, they, they left us. They went to other things and, and whatnot, but it, it was a part of me left with them. So I can't imagine that canine being in that car with them every day, going home with them every day, and uh, you know, being that partner and, and Lieutenant having to make this decision. But uh, throughout his career with us, uh, K-9 Major, he had uh, 60, oh, I'm sorry, correction, 51 successful suspect tracks. He had 85 successful drug fines, 193 public demonstrations, and 190 total arrests as a team since 2009. So I just wanted to share that with y'all, and, uh, um, and if y'all forward that opportunity, uh, Lieutenant Hurst and his wife and son, they, they would uh, like to keep him, and, uh, and uh, he's part of their family. You know, he, he is their family, so, um, but uh, we appreciate the opportunity. So, I have any questions? I Thank you for sharing very much. Yes, thank y'all. Appreciate it. Under old business, we have none. Under new business, number one is discuss action to approve the fiscal year 2018 budget amendments presented by Ms. Pollard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is just an annual housekeeping item. It doesn't, it goes back fiscal year, we're currently in fiscal year 2019. This goes back to 2018 and incorporates everything that you've done that impacted the budget throughout the year. 
from the time the original budget was approved in 2017. So um, primarily the adjustments that are made here, um, every department was touched. That doesn't happen all the time, but we had salary adjustments budgeted in one line item. This moves it to all the other line items. We had leave buyback budgeted in one line item. This moves it to all the departments where it was actually expensed. And it makes a transfer to complete um, cover the set makes a transfer from general fund to CIP to cover the expense for the land purchase as we've talked about before. So that's the gist of the uh, bulk of these transactions. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to address those. Covered most everything in our back end. So. I think so. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. New business number two, discuss action to approve the agreement between the city of Dallas and Paulding County regarding sewer billing. Ms. Paulding. Back in September of 2016, we began to um, combine some of the billing. What was happening in about 12 or 13 um, subdivisions, the customer would receive one water bill from Paulding County Water and a sewer bill from, from the city of Dallas. <coughs> Paulding County provides them water and the city of Dallas actually treats the sewer. So um, this is very confusing to the citizens as they would get they would have to establish service at two locations and honestly not everybody thinks about sewer um, when they're establishing their utilities. So it's just occurs. So to better serve the citizens, we combine those services. Uh, we began to build a sewer service for the city of Dallas. And we had two agreements, one was for Ivan Trace and one was for Cyberbrook, which were, um, authorized us to retain 10% in admin fees. We were, um, we were all in agreement that we were going to continue that to provide those sewer billings based on the um, agreements that were in place. What we didn't understand is each of us had a different view of what was being done. Um, so we were billing 10%. When we billed 10%, it increased the number of customers we were billing by about 1,600. And when we when we built those and charged 10% of the sewer fee, it was a substantial amount. It was um, fairly high. So the city of Dallas came back um, after, well, within the past three months, but it's been a continuing process of, of undeveloped um, new things that we were finally realizing on each side. About three months ago, they said, you know, this, this is really more than what we can afford. It's way more than what we were, it was costing us to build those customers. So we began to work on negotiations and we have come to an agreement that we didn't want um, the county to incur the cost for the city of Dallas, but, and we didn't want to exceed what it was costing them. So we worked it out but we're both in, our, in agreement that $2.50 a bill rather than the 10% of the sewer charge um, is sufficient to cover our cost and it's, it, it helps them as well. So what they've asked for in this agreement is that we go back to September of 2016 and we recalculate the bill. So we charge 10% for the Ivy Trace and Saddlebrook and $2.50 for the other 1600 um, this agreement does agree to that and we also have some information about that about the AMI which is a service that all of us are trying to get to where we can better read and serve the customers and it's a, it's really a consolidation of efforts on both of our parts to be able to serve the customers I'll just say something that's not in the backup. Um, you all have had at least a half dozen meetings with the city of Dallas and um, Ms. Pollard and Ms. Ashmore, Scott, um, Frank, um, have worked tremendously hard to coordinate and negotiate and just to resolve a lot of different questions with the city of Dallas. Uh, I've watched that and it, it's been gratifying to me to see 
what you all come up with in, in the final plan here. Did I leave anybody out? Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three is discuss action to approve a supplemental agreement in the amount of $82,025 for Atkins North America Incorporated for construction, engineering, and inspection services for an additional 965 hours. And standing in for Mr. George Jones is our own Scott Green. It's been a while. Um, you might want to get your hook ready. I've been known to grab the microphone and stay a little while. Um, if you're expecting George, I'm sorry. I know you might rather see George up here presenting on DOT, uh, but he's not able to be here with us kind of on short notice. So I'll cover what I can, best I can, and uh, answer any questions you have. The, uh, the short of it is that uh, our bridge projects are underway. It's on dallas Ackworth Road. As you all know, it's been a sort of a long bridge project with a, a detour through there. And we are winding down the good news. Uh, I think uh, next week they'll be shifting traffic to the new portion of the North Bridge, which is Pickett's Mill Creek. So traffic will finally be on the new bridge uh, at both locations on the, the wider portion that we put in initially. Um, the other good news is our last 1941 77-year-old bridge will be retired at that point. And that means there's no traffic on any bridges that are 77 years old anymore in this county. Uh, we still have one last 1941 bridge, but it's the Wood Bridge at the Silver Common Trail at Willow Springs for history's sake. So if you want to go out and see a bridge that old, you can go out there and check it out or, or ride your bike under it here uh, maybe Saturday. It would be great. Um, with a little bit of length uh, of extending the contract down out to December, uh, we're going to need some more project management, management services. And we've got a contract with Atkins for the project manager at uh, a previously uh, agreed contract rate, and this will cover us on through the end of the year. And uh, we, we need to keep the, the same manager we've got out there to finish everything and wrap it up. Um, other than that, I'll be glad to try to answer any questions you have. It'll be nice to get that done. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's, uh, it's been an <clears throat> aggravation. It's nice to have a wider bridge out there to, to, to travel across if you're, particularly if you're carrying a boat or you're meeting another car coming in the other direction. It's going to be uh, well received, I believe. So, thank you. And I'll, I'll stay up here for the next one. All right. New business number four is to discuss action to adopt resolution 18-47 amending chapter 62 of the Pauley County Code of Ordinances by creating and adding sec section 62.6 through section 62.6-2 yes. <laughs> and amending section 62-61 and section 62-63. to Updating the Pauling County Truck Route Resolution. Um, this is a resolution that takes, again, we found this a pretty old ordinance and we changed it to, to match what we're actually doing. This ordinance had a reference in it to um, primary access route, and we don't really have anything in the county that matches that. So we have changed that definition to truck route, and we have updated the maps to show which roads in the county are truck routes. Um, and then we have omitted any reference to that primary access road again. Um, so we do have new maps, if anyone wants to see those, that show which roads it are. Um, it's the ones that you're thinking of, Bakersburg, uh, Ridge Road, Bell Creek, East Paulding Drive, those kinds of roads are what's included. Um, when this ordinance was originally written, it was written to deal with logging trucks, but the state law <coughs> changed after it was written, and so we have reworked this to meet the needs that we have. Scott? That pretty well covers it. Um, just a couple <laughs> comments um, that you may you may be interested in. We are adding only one road. With all the time that's gone by, we're only adding one road. That's built with Parkway, which was built uh, obviously in the last several years, and is a major road and it's capable of carrying trucks. So we want to include that so trucks can avoid downtown hiring particularly. Also, um, we are removing ten roads, and a lot of those roads are are more residential in nature now over time and are not necessary for uh, through truck traffic. 
Uh, a couple of roads I would like to point out, uh, Cedar Crest Road. We've had quite a few calls about transfer trucks uh, traveling through the county, altering from Highway 92 and actually taking Cedar Crest Road at different times. That's generated some calls and concerns. And we can't completely control truck traffic, but we can put up signage and direct the trucks on which way they should go so that the, the heavier loads go where they belong, which is more direct to the state route. Um, also, Seven Hills Boulevard was on that, uh, that old truck uh, system, and that's been taken off along with several other roads that you have in your backup. This brings us overall from uh, about 30 roads down to 20 roads that are designated truck routes. And the, the strategy there is we're going to sign where trucks should go if they're making through trips, rather than try to police every road where they shouldn't go, which is about 3,000 other streets in the county. So it's a, it's a sort of a proactive way to promote <coughs> truck traffic. Um, there are penalties if a truck is found off on one of these other roads. It's a normal traffic violation that can be pursued. We get a complaint and an officer can pull them over that can be cited and uh, determine where their direction is, um, whether it's in violation or not. Anybody making a delivery on any other road in the county that has business there, as long as they're making a relatively direct route back to the state, so state route system or the truck system in the county, it's, it's considered acceptable. That's one of the exceptions. So um, I think it's a good change. It's a little bit overdue. It's not a major change, but it is necessary to comply with current law. You have any questions? I'll be glad to answer. Yes, Scott. What about Poplar Springs Road? <coughs> I didn't see it. It's on the list of being removed. That that is one that we have taken off. It's not. It was one of the ones that we removed. It was on the original thirty. It's gone down to twenty. Yeah, we might have had an earlier list. I'm not sure if that was on the very earliest backup we sent out. But yeah, it was included. That is a connection between Macklin Road and Highway 278. That tends to be. Um, overused or abused a little bit. Um, we've had to police that. We're officially making this change so we can enforce that corridor and, and, and help that situation since it's still primarily a residential route. Uh, once Macklin Road is wide in the future, it may it may need to change, but as it stands today, it's what we recommend. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. We read the list because we can do that. Did the, list, the list originally had, I believe, 13 roads that were removed? Uh, correct. We had um, the business park up there north of Dallas, Industrial Boulevard, Industrial Way Connector, up in that area. Uh, we felt that with the amount of truck traffic and deliveries, we didn't want to be have somebody nitpicked on whether they turned left or right to go back to Dallas Aquit since it's a loop right. and some connections in there. So that would be a little bit um, too particular. On <coughs> truck traffic. So we left those on there, and it is an industrial area. There's a lot of deliveries. So everything else other than the three industrial roads. I believe that's correct. Right. On there as well. Okay. Yes, sir. And y'all have the, the updated map, and this will be published and, and put on the uh, DOT website, and also as part of the clerk's records will be available to the public. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great report. I would like to uh, recognize two gentlemen I consider a special guest with Turner and our architect team, Mr. Tim Collins. Um, and I know you're going to report next Thursday, but thumbs up, it's going well. Okay. We have a lot of dirt out there. But also announced, and I just alluded, uh, that to deconflict with the school um, fall break at the end of the month, we are going to meet uh, the same day, uh, Thursday, on September the 20th, for our second October meeting. So that is the, we don't have anyone who has signed up to speak on non-agenda items to bring forward early, so um, that's the conclusion of our regular business. We do have a requirement for executive session to uh, talk about real estate and attending a potential litigation. I'd entertain a motion that we go into executive session for those purposes. I'd like to make a motion we go into executive session for real estate, pending and potential litigation, and I would like to add personnel on there. We have a motion uh, 
going to executive session, uh, adding personnel uh, by Commissioner Pownell. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Collette. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Carries 4 0. We stand adjourned to go into executive session. Well, good afternoon. We'll call the work session uh, back to order. And uh, during the uh, executive session, uh, we decided to add something to the agenda and Commissioner Pownell's to read that, describe it. All right. I'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda <clears throat> to approve the purchase of real property from Jerome and Jessica Dawkins, consisting of 3.034 acres located in land lot 161, the third district, third section of Paulding County for $73,000. The property is for the Paulding County Reservoir. The chairman is authorized to execute all contracts and documents necessary to complete the property purchase. So we'll add that to the agenda here at two o'clock and we think we can make that. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. No, we need to. It's what I gave you. We need a second. We need a second. Second. Vote on that. second. Okay. We do have to vote on adding it to the agenda. Uh, we got a motion, Commissioner Pownell and second Commissioner Crow. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Curious 5 0. And now I'll make a motion we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Collette. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. <laughs>